Thank you for taking the time to be with us, Roy. It's such a pleasure to see you again. Oh, Lila, thank you. Thank you for inviting me. It's such an honor to be here. Thank you. You know, in this time of joyful season, uh, that's my feeling about you. You bring joy wherever you go, as a teacher, as a performer. How did you get started playing ukulele? Actually, I was probably around almost 16 years old when there was a song on the radio called Sushi. It was recorded by Ota-san, who naturally played the ukulele. And it's hard to explain, but I, I just was gravitated to that song so much. I just couldn't wait to hear it again on the radio every day. And uh, one day, there was a little, little um, article in the newspaper that Ota-san was giving lessons. And I had to go and visit him and ask him if he could teach me how to play the ukulele. And when he said, yes, he'll take me on as a student, that was the beginning of my lifelong journey in learning how to play the ukulele and then going into teaching. And I, I just owe so much to Ota-san for giving me that opportunity to learn from him. Did you own a ukulele at the time? I had an ukulele, a, a cheap one, and I had tried learning from my friends uh, when I was 12 years old and 14, but honestly, no one could teach me. They, they, they would tell me to give up because they said, Roy, you can't even strum. So they said, don't even play the ukulele. <laughs> so I, I never played because I had no concept of rhythm. So my strum was totally erratic, you know? And, and what happened is that uh, when Ota-san taught me, he taught me the musical foundation of what music is about. It wasn't about playing yet. That's what I understood. And that's how I started learning to play. So tell us a little more about what is that musical foundation? Well, for me, when he, he explained to me where the musical notes, where the notes of a music staff are played on the ukulele, and showed me some very simple chords to learn. Once I understood that and I could read the notes, I was able to now take it to a different level in learning. And it, it didn't matter what type of music sheet he gave me in the future after that. It, it could have been motion picture themes, it could be jazz, Latin. I was able to comprehend and figure it out because I realized through the years and I started teaching that there was a really definite link between math and music, you know, and that made it easy for me since the one thing that that was easy for me was mathematics, you know. So now your devotion is passing on that joy. Oh, yes. Uh, when, I, when I had the opportunity to teach, at, at first it was just uh, some adults, but my passion was children. I always loved children. And so once children started coming to me, that, that brought me just total joy in teaching them to play because you would see the smiles on their faces and how much they enjoyed playing. It was like it was opening a whole new world for all these children and it's just started to grow and as uh, I don't know if you remember a group called the termites way back then there's <laughs> four little boys that I taught to play we would play at the basketball games and all over. It, it was amazing for people to see that the ukulele was not just a rhythmic instrument but these kids were playing songs like Hawaii Five-O and uh, Tijuana, Bra uh, Tijuana Brass songs by Tijuana Taxi, and it just grew. It, it, it's amazing. You've often talked about how the ukulele was a comfort to you growing up, so I, that's your um, empathy, I guess, with young children. Can you share a little bit more about that? Basically, I had a rough childhood because um, I was struggling with so many pain, much pain in my body, you know. I was born with a, um, a small right ear, which, which caused a lot of problems for me because children would say, what's wrong with your ear? How come it looks small? Why, is, why are you ugly? And it hurt me so much that I couldn't go to school. Even from kindergarten, I would mm -hmm. cut out. This lasted all through my years through the ninth grade. And then because you feel so hurt and you feel so different, I would roam the streets and get into trouble. You know, going to juvenile court and and you know, not hurting others, but hurting myself. And so I was very sad inside, but I knew how to cover it up by acting happy. But it didn't work, because don't, you can act happy during the day, but when you go to bed at night, all the sadness comes back. And it was dealing with that sadness and getting through it that opened a whole new world for me. And how did the ukulele soothe that or give you the confidence oh. to continue for the next day? 
it really opened a world of comfort because just learning to play the ukulele would take me away from all the things that I was sad about. And it brought me much relaxation and comfort playing. And that's why I think is one reason why I practice so many hours a day. I mean, I can remember practicing morning and in the afternoon and in the evening, probably if you add it up, maybe eight hours a day but it brought me much comfort. It kept you from roaming the streets. Yes, it, <laughs> and because of that, that's why I stopped getting into trouble. You know, because the neighborhood kids were getting in trouble, but I was always home playing my ukulele every day, and it brought me so much. It really brought me joy, comfort, and uh, it, was a, it, it gave me a different direction in life. Was that some of your uh, reasoning for starting your foundation? Well, yes, that came later on, the Foundation Ukulele Festival Hawaii, mm -hmm. which we started in 2004. And this is because, through a dream of mine, I started the Ukulele Festival at Kapiolani Park. My dream was to always to keep it free and to get children involved. I wanted to do something where the ukulele would be focused in the hands of children, and children would be the stars. And it grew, and it grew, and in 2004, we started that foundation because it was getting so huge that my wife and I couldn't carry it by ourselves. Mm -hmm. We needed help, we needed help. And through the foundation, we were, raised, we were able to raise some funds that helped us to continue putting on the ukulele festival and also offer scholarships to children that were graduating from high school and now going to college and had had a love for the ukulele. So it, it's been a blessing all around. You know, my acquaintanceship with you started without even knowing that you wrote one of my son's very favorite songs when he was in elementary school, I Am What I Am. And that's really your signature. Yes, it's, it's very close to my heart because that song uh, was also a big part of bringing me much healing. Yeah, that song, it was, I remember too, it was probably the year 1970 when I was sitting in my backyard and still not, not totally feeling good about myself, I started strumming, which I never do, by the way. I'm always picking, but I just started strumming, and without realizing it, not singing, because I don't sing, I started singing the song, I Am What I Am, and it stunned and shocked me. And when I had finished singing it, I ran into the house to get a pencil and paper to write down what I had just sung, because it just grabbed me. And to think, um, because I already knew how to write music, I wrote it out and sent it into Library of Congress to, to uh, register that song. And within, I think, uh, two or three years, the elementary school system asked if they could put that song and teach it to all the children. And it became a very um, familiar song to children growing up in the 70s. And 80s and 90s, and, 80s and, 90s, <laughs> and yes. even now. <laughs> yes. um, and you know, and the words, I am what I am, I'll be what I'll be. Luke, can't you see that it's me, all of me? Definitely it's part of your story, it's, but it's also the message that you have to children about playing music and ukulele being an instrument that's so portable. Yes. Um, parting words for parents who might not uh, be musically inclined, but know that music is important for children. I would just encourage parents to, you know, give all children the opportunity to, to learn to play music, whether it's the ukulele, guitar, piano, as long as it's related to music. And, and one of the things that I, I would encourage is that, you know, growing up in our time, everything was practice, 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 practice. But with so much that is going on with the world today, I think one of the most important messages that I share to parents <clears throat> is that let the children enjoy what they're learning. Mm -hmm. The enjoyment is probably the most important thing next to, you don't want perfection unless they want it. What you want them to do is enjoy it. And, and through that joy will come a lot of, believe it or not, I believe healing too. And let them be who they are. Yes, let them, <laughs> I am what I am, I'll be what I'll be. Look, can't you see? Yes, that it's me. Yes. Well, thank you so much for spending the time and reminding us, especially during this time, in this happy season, that the, the joy that we have in the world really comes from ourselves. Thank you for having me here. It's, it's been a wonderful time spending with you. Thank you.